Now, you can follow the movies even if you don't see these footnotes come up. But it does give you some understanding if you do, under, if, if you do know what those things are. Now, the same is true in the Gospels. Almost every other line, there's a footnote of sorts. Somehow connected to the Old Testament. And if you follow the footnotes, it will help explain what is going on. And here, in this passage, in Mark's Gospel, the footnotes are usually in a specific portion of Scripture. Isaiah chapter 40 through 60. If you were to sit down and read Mark's Gospel, you should have one finger in the book of Isaiah, chapters 40 through 60, because all he does is keep going, it reminds me of this, reminds me of this, reminds me of this, reminds me of this, over and over and over and over again. So if you don't know what's going on there, it's going to be hard to know what's going on in the gospel. Not impossible, but it was really helpful for you to be familiar with that. And of course, you're probably not Jewish, but if you were Jewish, you would know those chapters inside and out. You would know exactly what he's saying when he says it. Now, you can go back to that slide. Okay, here's Isaiah 51.9. Israel is frustrated that God seems to have fallen asleep. And so they say, Awake, awake, clothe yourself with strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in days gone by, as in generations of old. Isaiah 51, 17, God's response. You wake up. Awake, awake, rise up, Jerusalem. Isaiah 52, 1. You awake, O Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. I'm not the one who's sleeping. You are, is what the passage is saying. And if you go back to the story in Mark, what that story is about is not Jesus sleeping, but the disciples. It's not a story about Jesus waking up. It's about the disciples waking up to who Jesus is. Does that make sense? If you don't understand that, you will not understand the story. Now, why does Jesus calm the storm? Quite simple. If you look at the passage, it is only something that God does. God has control of nature. And therefore, he does something to control nature. And as this passage points out, which is referring to God, we are not left in the dark as to what he is claiming. He's not claiming just to be a prophet. He is not claiming to just be a, a guru or a, a religious guy. He's claiming to be God incarnate. <coughs> now, you might not believe that, but that is what he's saying. And if you read through the Gospels, almost every story is making that point. Here, let's look at another one. Next uh, passage. Mark 6. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them walking on the lake. Here is the story of Jesus walking on water. Does that ring a bell? Okay. Now, he... This is going out to a Jewish audience. Everyone in the audience would know what Job chapter 9, verse 8 says. That God alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. So if you're Jesus and you don't want people to, to confuse you or misunderstand things, this would be the last thing that you would do. Because everyone in your audience knows only God walks on water. And so when you walk on water, people are going to make assumptions. And it's very clear what he's saying. Do you see that? I mean, that would be the last thing you would do, right? If you're talking to a Jewish audience that knows Job 9.8, that would be the last thing you would do. You wouldn't want to confuse them. You'd want to say, no, I'm just a prophet. No, that's not what he's saying. Now, all right, like I said, you can just keep going through story, through story, through story, and see these things. In fact, I'll let you pick out the next one here. Let's go to the next verse. Well, you ready? Let's see if you can find it in here. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his fingers. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first and told only Jesus was left with a woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do 
I condemn that she just declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Okay, where is it? Where is he claiming to be God? Yeah. With the writing on the ground. Yeah. That, that's one thing, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Here's another one. If you try this. Try, just do an experiment. Go into a grocery store and walk up to someone you've never met before, that's never done anything to you, and say, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Okay, you know. <laughs> Not only that, I forgive you for everything you've ever done wrong in your life. Go now, leave your life in sin. <laughs> and then head to the frozen food section. Try it. I would think that people would say there's something really strange about what's going on here. Only God can forgive sins that were not committed against Him. Right? I mean, I, if you did something to me, I could forgive you for that, but I can't, like, forgive you for something that you did to someone else. Right? Now, the second thing is, uh, as he mentioned, the writing on the ground, okay? You know, for years, people used to think, you know, what is Jesus writing, you know, his finger, you know, like John 3, 16. You know, what is he doing, you know? <laughs> Scribbling, scrabbling. Um, <laughs> Jesus rules. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> If you do a word search in the Old Testament, just look for the word finger. It'll only appear one other time. And it's when Moses is on top of Mount Sinai, and it says that God wrote on the tablet with his finger the commandments. So the experts in the Mosaic Law are trying to catch the person who wrote it, is the point. And the person who wrote it is letting this woman off the hook. That's what the story is saying. That's why he's writing to the ground. This is the author of the moral law. And if the author of the moral law says you're free, you're free. Every story, you go through the Gospels, you look for the footnotes, and it will become abundantly clear to you what Jesus is claiming. He is claiming to be God in human form. God become man. And it would only make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, if God really is there, how many little spokesmen and, and postcards can you send? How many prophets do you show up yourself? I would expect you to show up sometime. And that's what Jesus is claiming. Okay, here's the second thing. Ready? Now, should I mention this? Yeah, no, never mind. Here, let's keep going. <laughs> Sorry. All right, second question. Why don't the disciples recognize him? Okay, why don't the disciples recognize who Jesus is? You know, at the end of the story, they're like, who is this? You know, it's like, because they're, they're, they're waking up, right? They're kind of starting. It's a story of the disciples waking up. And so at the end, they're like, wait a second. When did you get here? And, and, and so it's their realization of who he is. And so the question is, why don't the, why don't the disciples seem to get who Jesus is? 